Hello and welcome. In this video, I'll be showcasing how the JSORT application works. JSORT is a sorting algorithm visualizer that allows its users to take a data set of numbers and sort those numbers using the sorting algorithms provided by JSORT. JSORT was created using Java and the Java Swing framework. Source code will be provided in the link below. The user is given both a main application they can use to adjust custom settings and numbers plus given the option to start. The user is also gifted a console screen to gain output of the numbers they are working with along with the size of the sample set. When the program is complete, it provides the user output of how long it took to sort those numbers along with those numbers sorted already. Throughout this video, I'll be explaining how these sorting algorithms work using a draw board. If you like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Anyways, I'm moving forward with this video. Bubble sorting is probably one of the slowest processes when it comes to sorting our numbers. So, how the bubble sort works is that it takes one item, compares it to the next, and checks if it's greater than, than that next item. If it is, swap those numbers. If it's not, continue with the process and ask the same question. So I have a set of four numbers right here that I'm gonna demonstrate the bubble sort process. Is one greater than eight? No, it is not. Is eight greater than five? Yes, it is. One, five, eight, three. Same process, one greater than five? No, it's not. Is five greater than eight? No, it's not. Is eight greater than three? Yes, it is. One, five, three, eight. We ask ourselves, is one greater than five? No, it's not. Is five greater than three? Yes, it is. One, three, five, eight. That is our sorted data set. The downside of the bubble sort is that this should have been the last iteration of the bubble sorting algorithm, but no. It had to check one more time and ask, is this sorted? So that's one iteration extra that we did not need. Selection sorting is pretty much one of the easiest sorting algorithms to understand. So in comparison to the bubble sorting, what we do is that we stick to one number when we're going down the list and comparing if we're greater than that number. There's a twist to it though. We're asking, are we greater than that number, but it has to be the smallest number that it's greater than. So like, for example, eight is greater than four and two. That is true, but two is the smallest value. Due to that rule, we have to swap two and eight. So obvious reasons, one is the smallest value out of this data set. So we're gonna move on to eight. Is eight greater than four? Yes, it is. Eight greater than two? Yes, it is. But as I mentioned earlier, we're sticking to that one number, going down the list, asking, are we greater than you? But we have to find the smallest value that it's greater than. Due to that, we swap two with eight and eight with two. This is the fully sorted data set using the selection sorting algorithm. Quick sorting is known to be one of the fastest sorting algorithms out there in comparison to both the bubble sort and the selection sort, quick sort works faster. So the process to, to perform the quick sorting algorithm can be difficult to understand. So I'm gonna try my best to explain how it works. So as you can see on my screen, I have something called a pivot. A pivot is pretty much an item that we're gonna compare from the far most left item, which is if it's greater than the pivot, and the far most right item, if it's less than the pivot. If both are true, both statements from both the left and the right, both of those numbers swap places. And we continue down the line until we meet in the middle between the left and the right. So to get started, we ask, hey, 10, are you greater than 70? It is not 50 is less than 70, that is true. So since 10 is not greater than 70, we have to move on and ask the same question with 80. 80 and 50 are both true in their statements. So due to that, 50 and 80 swap their positions. And the list looks like this. And we continue on with the same question. Hey, 30, are you greater than 70? No, it's not, move down. 90 is greater than 70, 40 is less than 70. So both statements are true, 40 and 90 swap. Bring your 30 down, keep your 70 down here, and that, that looks about right. Now we have to do something called partitioning. Pretty much we're going to be focusing on one side, which is the left. This is known as left partitioning. So 40 is our pivot on the left side. So 
we're going to compare. Hey, 10, are you greater than 40? No, it is not. Is 50 greater than 40? Yes, it is. 30 is less than 40. So due to that, we want to swap both 30 and 50 with each other. Bring 40 back over here. Still working with the same partitioning. 50 is greater than 40, so just to make sure one last time, which is known as partitioning, just checking if this is sorted on X side. Since 50 is greater than 40, we can rearrange and draw out the data set of the left side to look exactly like this. Now you have a sorted left side. Now it's focused on the right side. 70 is still our pivot. Is 90 greater than 70? Yes, it is. Is 80 less than 70? No, it is not. So we have to move over, since that is a middleman between the left and the right, 90 and 70 have to both swap places. So our new sorted array would look something exactly like this. I have to say, this was a cool project that I got to work on. I was inspired to work on this project, like, as I saw many developers create their own visualizer, but one YouTuber in particular I would like to say was very inspirational was Timo Bingman. He has a variety of sorting algorithm visuals for you to see. One question you might be asking is, why did I use the Java Swing framework to make this? Well, I thought it would be tough, which it was, but I saw a guy on YouTube by the name of Hobson. His take on this topic was very well executed using the Java Swing framework when creating the sorting algorithm visualizer. I'll leave both of their links in the description down below so that way you can take a look. Anyways, that does it for this video. 